During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk about something that affects farmers just about everywhere in our country. It's called chemical antagonism. Well, farmers are like anybody else. They want to get as many jobs done as quickly as they can. So when it comes to spraying, if there's grasses out there to kill and there's broadleaves out there to kill, why not just mix the two together? That's the common mistake that many farmers make. Yep, and what ends up happening is a lot of times these broadleaf killers and the grass killers are just not compatible in that tank. So we end up with what we call chemical antagonism and it can come in a couple of different ways. Number one, what'll happen is when you put those two products into the tank, the one can actually degrade or break down the other one. So by the time you reach the field, you think you have a quart to the acre, but now you only have a pint to the acre that's actually left. The other way that chemical antagonism occurs is in the actual plant, the target weed that you're spraying. So these two products go on at the exact same time. Well, one product could shut down the plant before the other one gets a chance to get to the growing point and actually totally kill the plant. So you might just end up with plant injury instead of the plant death that you're actually looking for. Now there are a couple of different solutions to this problem and one that's been tried for many years is to say, all right, if I'm mixing my broadleaf killer and my grass killer in the same tank and now my grass killer doesn't work very well, I'll just put in a higher rate of the grass killer and then they'll both work. Yes, in many cases you can do that. Well, you can do that. You can increase the rate of one or even both products when you put them together. But number one, you've just spent a bunch more money. And number two, you haven't totally fixed the problem. You might get control, but even when you up the rate, you might still have slightly less control. So it's not an ideal situation. For corn and soybean farmers, once Roundup Ready corn and beans came out, we really didn't have to worry about the possibility of mixing a grass and a broadleaf herbicide because Roundup was controlling both. But Roundup Ready wheat, well, we don't have that yet. That's right, we don't have Roundup Ready wheat. So this is the number one weed issue that we deal with in wheat. It's not really the weed per se, it's the fact that farmers are trying to mix their broadleaf herbicide with their grass herbicide, and when they do that, we just end up with worse control, especially on the grass, but also a little bit on the broadleaf side. But that grass side, that really gets hurt. Well, really the solution is at planting time, leaving some tram lines out in the field because farmers just hate running over that wheat multiple times. When they put tram lines out and leave rows that are not planted or not seeded, just uh, in line where their tracks can run, then farmers can make as many passes as they want in the field without damaging the But that's crop. really the biggest hang up because most people don't have tram lines. And they say, well, I don't want to run over that crop twice and I don't want to make an extra trip because that costs money. Well, on our farm, I only figure it costs about $2 an acre to run over with the sprayer again and I look at the weed control issues in a lot of these wheat fields, and they're losing a lot more than $2 by not spraying in separate applications. So if you're a non-farmer, we just wanted you to understand that this chemical antagonism thing is a big deal. When you're mixing two different herbicides together, it may sound good, you may think you're gonna control all the weeds, but it oftentimes does not work. If you're a farmer, we want you to understand that very often you're much more ahead to just make a separate trip. You'll get better weed control. I know it takes a little extra time, but if you get better weed control, you should have better yield and it'll more than pay for your time in most cases. Well, it'll certainly pay off if you have a tough weed like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 